Welcome back everyone to another episode of How To Get Good. Now today is going to be about crowd control. We've already gone over light attacks and heavy attacks, we've gone over interrupts and blocks and all that good stuff. And animation cancelling as well, but if you've seen those episodes already then you're probably ready for this one. The other episodes do kind of lead up towards this though, so if you don't know about those already you probably want to go and check them out. Now, crowd control is something that is very very important in the Elder Scrolls Online, especially as a tank perhaps or as a support role, even as a DPS, and especially in PvP. So it has lots of different elements of the game where it will become important. And also, it can help towards your sustain if you know how certain types of crowd control um, actually works. So, there are several different types. The two most basic ones are Immobilize and Stun. Fear will also come into category of Stun because it, co it covers the same cooldowns, but... Basically what happens is Immobilize will actually pin your feet to the ground. Now, you're not stuck as such. You're not stunned. You are just rooted. So your feet are stuck. Now the way to get out of this is to simply dodge roll. If you've got enough resources. However, if you haven't, you have to wait until it's finished. And it may just finish and fall off. Or you may end up dead. Depends on the skill. Stuns, however, you will have to break free. Because you are physically stunned. So, this guy here, for example, let's put a little beast trap on him. This is a mobilization. So, he can't move. He can't get to me. And he's on a very short period of time where it'll actually just run off. Now, that depends on the skill. Some skills have a longer mobilization than others. Now, if I put it under his feet, he's immobilized. He'll get out straight away almost. It's been a second. I'll put another one under him. And I can't actually capture him twice because he's on a cooldown. So, there is an immobilization immunity phase where once you've pinned someone, you then have to wait for them before they can be pinned again. So, you have to play careful with these types of abilities. Don't just put immobilizations down to pin stuff if it's already done, because it'll just run away. Now, another type of control is a stun. Now, this one is in the form of a fear, but it's a very different fear. So, this is very specific to the class. This is a necromancer, by the way, if that wasn't already obvious. Most fears will make people run in a random direction away from the target. Now, that does technically count as a full control. It's a hard um, CC or hard crowd control, which you will have to break free from. Otherwise, you'll just keep running until the spell ends. This particular fear works exactly the same as a stun where it pins the target on the spot. So, this here, if they walk into it, they're stunned. He can't move. He will have to break free. And then he'll be free again. Now, if I try and stun him again... I can't because you can see these swirling circles around his feet where he can't actually be stunned for a period of time. Now that is actually a six second cooldown. Although the skill lets him still move around, I can't stun him again for a further six seconds, which is pretty hefty. But that happens after the stun. It's not initial. So we'll wait for those to run out. I may need to heal. We'll kill these. This one is very important, by the way, what I'm now using here. So... We'll stun this dude first. Now, there's no circles around his feet. Now, watch carefully when he gets out of it. After it's finished, there's the swell. Two, three, four, five, six. He can be stunned again now. Now, that's very important. In PvP, that is essential because it tells you when you can and can't get away with stunning someone you might overuse your resources and just keep stun 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 for no reason but in pve it's also very relevant as well because it keeps a good tracker on your skills if you're trying to control the room now this is also relevant for yourself so if you get stunned you can break free and there's a time period where you can't actually be stunned anymore if that is in pvp that is very very useful of course because you can use that window of opportunity to just completely avoid stuns and in PvE, that actually gives you a bit of a bonus as well, because if you can keep an eye on your trackers, you can decide whether to go in full health or lever against the target you're up against, or step back a bit because he's going to stun you. That depends on the fight, and also, in some situations, maybe an attack is coming in which is really, 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 really weak, and you have to block it, otherwise you'll get stunned. But the damage is, is minimal, doesn't really do anything. Well, in these situations, if you've got the swirling circle around your feet, 
and you can't be stunned, that particular attack won't need to be blocked if it's weak. If it's strong, make sure you do block it. But if it's weak, because it's not going to stun you. So pay attention to your feet. Keep an eye on your immunity phases. It's very, very important. But above all, this is for controlling the enemies. If we're talking PvE situations. Look how simple it is to keep them where they are. Now that is very, very important for tanks. You will need to pay attention to what does and doesn't control the room. Now there is one more area of crowd control that I'm going to go into. There is other stuff, of course, but these are the most important ones. But before that... Just be aware that you will need to pay attention to your light and heavy attack video for this. This is the first how to get good video. So if you haven't checked this out already, go and check it, then come back. Now, off balance. Off balance is a CC of sorts. Now, if I can apply it, hopefully I can. Because it can be a pain. He's off balance there. Now, he's wobbling a little bit. He's got, he's got the swirly pattern around his head. Now, that was a bit quick because he's dead. But instead of around her feet... It's around their head. During that off-balance phase, that's when they are exposed. Or you can take advantage of the exposure. Now, we'll go for it again. What you're looking for on the buffs above their head is a blue kind of head of a character. With kind of swirling... There you go. That one there. The dark blue one with the swirling stars around their head. Look at the buff timers. That's off-balance. Now... Obviously, when it runs out, they are immune for 15 seconds. All enemies have this now on the PTS. Whether that goes live or not is another matter. You may have to pay attention to that when the patch comes out. But at the moment, anything that goes off balance is off balance for 7 seconds and immune to off balance for 15 seconds. So be very aware of that. You're looking for the blue visual with the stars around their head. And then you're looking for the dude in the background looking really obnoxious because it's now you can't make me go off balance again. That's very important for certain damage types, but above all, this does have an element of CC. So, how does that affect crowd control? While something is off balance, they're in an exposed state. And what you can do, this is in a tutorial as well, is you can heavy attack the target and it will fall over. It will knock it down. Now, we may have to swap weapons here because our damage is a little bit high for these little minions. Now, before we show you the demonstration, there's several different ways to make things go off balance. You can uh, dodge roll them with a certain champion point um, passive, where if you dodge roll their attacks, they will go off balance because they get a little bit wobbly. The lightning wall of elements or wall of shock, whichever morph you actually have, this here has its own effect. So it does damage every one second, but based on status effects, concussion in fact, um, you can then knock them off balance. Now concussion is a side effect, if you like, a status effect from lightning damage. Very slim chance to do it, but your chance is heightened with passives and Destro staff passives and all that good stuff. And if you apply the concussion status effect, you apply minor vulnerability, which will make them susceptible to 8% more damage from everyone. But above all, Wall of Elements itself, whichever morph you have, knocks concussed enemies off balance. It's a, a double dip um, ability, if you like. It can apply concussion from lightning damage. And if an enemy is concussed, it will go off balance. If this skill isn't down, that won't happen. Concussion can still happen from lightning, but off balance will not. This is the only one that will actually do it. Now, there are other skills, of course. If an enemy is channeling and you hit them with crushing shock, which is the destruction staff skill line, it starts off as force shock, morph it to crushing shock specifically. This one doesn't do AoE damage, but this one does apply an interrupt. If you interrupt the enemy with this, you will knock them off balance. If you interrupt an enemy full stop, you will knock them off balance. So there's several different ways to do it. There are other ways as well. If you block an enemy, they will bounce off your shield and occasionally go off balance depending on the target, including some bosses as well. So if you do knock them off balance for 7 seconds, they will be susceptible to harder heavy attacks. Because if you do heavy attack a target that is off balance, you will do 70% more damage with the heavy. You will get double resources back from the heavy attack as well. And one more thing exploitation we won't go into the champion point side of things that's in all of my build videos anyway yes there's a way to do extra damage to off balance targets but this is the most important one let me get him to heavy attack me so he can bounce off my shield it's a little bit easier to do that because if i put wall of elements down i'm gonna kill him come on don't let me down here we go he is now off balance watch this sit down 
and he's still off balance. Now, you can't stun him multiple times, because remember, the circle's around the feet. He can't be re-stunned. But the off balance persists. So, if he's off balance, you can exploit him with a heavy attack to knock him over. Then, you will benefit from the double resource gain, the extra damage from the heavy. You'll stun the target as well. This is all very important stuff. So, this particular CC is kind of a combo. You do get taught this at the beginning of the game. And it isn't necessarily explained very, very well, but it is something that you can pick up along the way. So, let's recap over that just to make sure things make a bit more sense. You have immobilization. For the purpose of this video, we used a beast trap. You can use um, talons from the Dragon Knight. You can use uh, grip from the, the Warden. There's lots of different ways to immobilize your target. That puts their feet still on the ground. And for a very short period afterwards, you can't immobilize them again. That's around the three seconds area. It's not very long. So, just to recap over that, we'll put Beast Trap on him, then we'll do it again. You can't get him. It'll still pop and do damage, but we can't pin him. But we can now. Pinned. He's off balance also. Off balance, and immobilized, and stunned all at the same time. That's a pretty good example, actually. I'm glad that didn't get too confusing. Now, so you've got the immobilization side of things. We've around a three second immobilization phase. So if you are pinning stuff down and it is immobilized for four seconds, for example, you can actually reapply it straight after and it will have an indefinite effect. But if it's a one second immobilization and you reapply it straight away, it's not going to work. So that's to pin their feet, but they can still hit you. This one is a stun. They can't hit you while they're stunned. Can't do a damn thing. But... Look around their feet, they do have an immunity to stun for a six second period of time. So be aware of that, that's very, very important. And finally, just to recap again, off balance. If something does go off balance, heavy attack it. You will get double resources back, you will knock it down. And stun it. Now, just bear in mind, bosses are immune to immobilize. So are some elite enemies, by the way. Bosses are immune to stun, they're immune to fear. But they are not immune to off balance. You will not knock them over, but you will knock them into an off-balance state where you can do more damage to them and you can get more resources back. But they do apply the same rules for the cooldown. Now, just to confirm, by the way, your weapon type doesn't matter for the off-balance knockdown. You can knock people off-balance onto the ground during that phase with a heavy attack from any weapon type. Magic weapons, sword and board, melee, bow, doesn't matter. This heavy attack, and then finish as long as it finishes will knock them over but remember i said bosses don't so look very carefully immobilization on a boss doesn't happen he's not immobilized fear or stun on the boss doesn't happen off balance can happen let's make sure it actually procs because sometimes it can be a bit tricky there's your off balance i can still get my heavy attack returned back I can still get the extra damage from the heavy attack, but he will not be knocked over. Now, as you can see again, just in case you couldn't see it earlier, that symbol above his head there, that shows that he is immune to off balance for a period of time. Once it is off, it will go back to normal and we can knock him off balance again. Now, it is very important to note, of course, some sets can stun targets. So, what you need to be very aware of is that if you are using an ability or set that stuns a target and you are a DPS or a healer or even a tank in fact and the room is trying to be controlled you could add a negative effect to that control so you need to know your skills and your abilities for example there is one more type of CC and that is a chain ability now, what we need to do is go into Fighters Guild skill line here because we don't really have one that we can really utilize as a Necro unless we're getting attacked. So, we'll show you this. There's several different types of abilities for this, but this will actually pull in the target. So, what it does is this. Long range, pull them into you. He can't be pulled because he's a boss. Standard trash mobs can. Now, this counts as a stun. It doesn't technically stun them, but it does control them and move them physically. And they can be immobilized once they get in. But they can't be pulled in and then stunned on the spot. Because that shares the same cooldown. So the trick to this for tanks is to pull in and then immobilize second. So then it holds them in. Pull them in, hold them in. Don't pull them in, try and stun them because they'll just run off again. Now, this is very, very important to know. 
because that effectively counts as a stun type of effect, they will have the swirl and circle around their feet, and they will be immune to CC for that type. Which means if you drop this on his head as a DPS, stun him and knock him down, your tank can't now pull that in. That makes control difficult. So what you need to do is be aware of your crowd control abilities. Same for this, if he is channeling an ability right now and I interrupt him with this, that's fine. But if I now heavy attack him and knock him down, he's stunned and now the tank can't pull him in again. Remember, there's two major types. A stun, which is a hard CC, or an immobilize, which is a soft CC. Soft CCs can be dodge rolled and pulled out of, and they have a shorter cooldown as far as immunity is concerned. Hard CCs are stuns, and they have a longer gap of immunity, so you have to be very careful. Now, remember... There are many sets and skills in the game that can stun enemies. So, if you are one of those people wearing a stun set or a stun ability, utilize them carefully while you're in a group situation. Because if your tank needs to do this, it's no good you stunning it because you're just going to get sworn at. And this is a good example as well, this new set, which is amazing. This will actually stack ticks on the target. And then it will add an undodgeable attack, knocking the enemy into the air. But if they can't be knocked into the air, it will deal damage. So for this particular target, if we put on five light attacks with weaves, you'll see the bone image there with the black background. When I get to five, it will pop. Big hand comes out. Boom. Loads of damage. However, if that target is not an elite or a boss or whatever, that can be flung into the air instead. So if he's already CC'd, that will do damage. If he's not, you will fling him up in the friggin' air and your tank is going to swear at you because now they can't pull it in. That is a prime example of knowing your sets and knowing your crowd control and making sure that you don't overuse stuff unnecessarily just because your dummy score looked really, really good and you want to hit stuff. Sometimes you have to pace what you're doing in order to help in the fight, especially as far as control is concerned. Now, we're going to bring in a real dummy. Now, we're going to invite a glamorous assistant of ours. This is Doom. He has been playing for a very, very long time. Actually, took a break recently, but because he took a break, now we get to beat him up. So, I'm going to show how this actually looks on a player. It works exactly the same on enemies anyway, but this is a little bit easier to demonstrate since most enemies are running around in circles, and we haven't really got any content I can show you at the moment, apart from group stuff, where these events will happen so i'm gonna chuck him in a duel real quick so i'm gonna get him to jesus beam me in the face okay so now we're gonna interrupt him instantly off balance but that also stuns him as well because it knocks him into that state however watch what happens afterwards now he has a immunity phase so i can't knock him off balance but you did see there that the stun was enough to make it so that he couldn't be stunned as well so, you have to keep an eye on these mechanics. Interrupted, stunned. That circle around his feet, I cannot stun him anymore. Now, once it's gone, I can pull him in. Can't do it until it's gone, though. There you go. You can still do interrupts and all that good stuff, but you can't stun them physically again. Now, immobilization is different. That will immobilize him on the feet, and he can actually dodge roll out of it. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to knock him off balance, first of all. So, knock him off balance. Now I'm going to heavy attack him and stun him. Now, I can't pull him in, can I? Because he's stunned. But, I can immobilize him. And he can dodge roll out of it. But he's still CC immune. He could still not be stunned. So they're two different types of crowd control. They overlap. If someone is stunned, they can be immobilized. But, once they break free from a stun... Or, if the stun is finished, they can't be stunned then for a period of time. So, pay very close attention to these different types. Spinny circles around the head means they're off balance. Spinny circles around their feet means they are stun immune. Then, if you've got the guy in the buff timers who stand there really obnoxiously, they're immune to it off balance. And, of course, if they have been immobilized, you need to wait a few seconds before you can actually try and do so again because they can't be immobilized instantly after they've already been stuck. Beast Trap, Immobilized, Dodge Roll, Beast Trap, can't be caught again. However, now he can. 
You see the difference? So hopefully that made a bit more sense. It's a little bit complex to start with. There are several different types of control, but remember there's three major issues. You've got stun, which has a long cooldown. You've got immobilize, which is a very short cooldown, which you can actually dodge roll out of. And you also have the off balance part where you do more damage, you get more resources back, you do um, have the ability to stun the enemy, which then leads into another CC. In PvP, this is something you have to pay a lot of attention to, especially since you can use immovable potions. So if someone's using immovable pots and they've got circles around their feet, keep an eye on it. As soon as that's gone, you can stun them again. Don't try and stun them if you can't do that. And in PvE, you, as a DPS or a healer, need to understand these mechanics fully, because otherwise you're going to piss off your tank. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully that wasn't too complicated. Thank you, Doom, our glamorous assistant. Hugely appreciated. So firstly, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification button. That way you will know when I upload videos. Also, if you'd like to support outside of the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website, zynodegaming.com. And again, going back to YouTube, there is a join button on there now, which is a membership system. Hit that button, see if there's anything you like. If you've seen someone throwing emotes in the, uh, the live premieres, by the way, that's how they got them. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.